Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the Dory Woodman YouTube channel. In this video we are going to showcase how we have fitted a Mitsubishi Ikidan alongside the Mixer G hot water cylinder. Artlist I.O. Okay, so our scenario, we've got a Mixergy hot water cylinder working alongside the Mitsubishi Ikidan 8.5 kilowatt heat pump. It was very clear to us in the beginning when we first came to this property that the homeowner was very particular about technology and using renewable tech and having gadgets and apps on their phones to control and monitor um, you know, certain situations. So as well as this gadgetry and the renewable tech that we've got here, they've also got solar PV by way of Tesla and the Tesla Powerwall. They wanted to take care of not having gas in the property at all. So we were looking at what would be the best design, the most innovative way and the most efficient way to one, heat the home and generate their hot water. Now we found out about Mixergy and looking at their website and if you haven't already I think I would implore you to have a look at their products and we really like the way that they're um, looking at kind of the future of hot water as such. Now you probably wonder can you really get excited about hot water? Well us as at Dory Woodman, yes we can because we're always looking at ways in which people can generate their hot water in the most efficient way. And one of the uh, questions that we get asked very often is Oh, well I've heard that you don't get enough hot water particularly in the winter from an air source heat pump which is not true entirely not true in the winter months in the summer months we can produce adequate hot water with an air source heat pump however Mixergy have developed a hot water cylinder that one increases that efficiency by its design also increases the capacity by its design and also uses um, tech smart technology in order for it to be able to learn your hot water usage only charge the hot water that you actually really need for the home instead of an entire tank and there is a thermostat or there are it, it gauges the temperature of the cylinder the entire cylinder not just from one sensor pocket or two sensor pockets the entire way down throughout this cylinder itself and that gives you flexibility because we can actually charge this cylinder at 10 percent increments not only that so we're using the heat pump generally speaking when you've got a, a hot water cylinder this doesn't apply to the mitsubishi dam because they use a, a similar setup with a plate heat exchanger heating the hot water but other um hot water or sh should i say um heat pump ready cylinders basically have a larger capacity coil inside of the cylinder so a conventional cylinder you connect up a flow and return from a boiler for instance you've got a coil that goes inside that that acts as its plate heat exchanger that heat generates inside of the hot water cylinder and gives you your hot water capacity when you're talking about heat pumps working at a slightly lower temperature then your cylinder coil has to be of a larger capacity to enable you to create as much hot water in a good time so that it's not taking longer than what it should do so you want it to be able to charge from 10 degrees cold to 55 degrees for example you want to try and get that in within about an hour to an hour and 20 minutes if you have a smaller coil you know it could take a lot longer to do so but the bigger the coil the more capacity it takes up inside the cylinder so effectively if you've got a 200 litre cylinder you could be reducing that by about 20 to 30 litres depending on the size of the, of the coil inside. With the mixed G cylinder there is no coil. There's an option for a coil particularly if you're using solar thermal or you know you can choose ways in which you can have an arrangement. In this particular instance we've only got heat we've only got the heat pump heating the hot water as, a, as an appliance. We've also got solar PV which we'll talk about in just a moment. So we've got a PV switch that enables the, um, once we start seeing the energy going back into the grid to take it out. If we need hot water generation, solar PV will then think, actually, I'm not gonna take it to the grid. I'm gonna use that energy and start charging the hot water, thus making it more efficient for the homeowner. 
So on the front of this cylinder, we have a plate heat exchanger, a flow and a return go into the plate heat exchanger. And as that hot water mixes with a pump from the cold water inside the cylinder, it starts to generate that hot water. The way the cold water enters the cylinder enables it to stop, it basically reduces the amount of cold water that mixes with the hot water. So actually your capacity and, use, and useful hot water is bigger than what it would be for a conventional cylinder. What I mean by this is that you would have your cylinder and a cold water feed going straight into it. As you start to deplete the hot water, the cold water starts to spread out and mix in with the hot water. So it starts to become cooler and then more tepid the more that you use. The way this has, it's what they call a baffle system. So it spreads the cold water from the middle out across the bottom of the cylinder. And then as that is equally um, plated out, it goes against the hot water and it will raise up like this. Instead of it coming in from the side against the hot water, mix, 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 starts to reduce. Now if you look at their videos, it shows you that in, in far more and, and better detail that I can actually physically explain. But it does enable you then to look at your hot water capacity and you can increase that by 10, 20 to 30 percent. So in fact, 210 litre cylinder will give you around 240 litres of useful hot water. You've also got the ability to do this in 10 percent increments as well. So if you as it learns what your hot water habits are, you could be living in a house that's got four bathrooms, but there's only two people living there. So you're, even though you have to put the capacity in to enable that if it was a full house with a family to be able to produce enough hot water for that, you know, for, for a full family living in there. But if you've only got a couple of people and you're only using a certain amount of hot water, it will learn how much hot water you're using and then only charge up what you are using, making that far more efficient and not completely fill in a whole tank of water for the sake of, of, of doing so. And then once you get into that situation, but you've got more people staying in the home, for example, quite easily on the app, you can start to bulk up more and more hot water as you want to, as I said, by 10% increments. We've set this up with solar um, PV. Um, you get options to put solar thermal on it as well. All we needed to do was have a solar um, PV switch um, that talks to a solar eye boost and when such time as the PV system wants to start charging this hot water it will divert over and start using the PV as opposed to the heat pump. So this is our typical setup here so with the Ekadan we've got our interface here so this is the gobbins it talks to the heat pump interacts with the interface for the mixed G cylinder so inside of here there's a various amounts of dip switches and depending on the heat pump manufacturer you can actually select which one you'll be using and the reason why there are different variants is because different systems use different methods of how they communicate and how they will charge hot water so the guys at mixg have basically come up with concepts to allow each individual heat pump manufacturer to work effectively with their system which i think is superb idea so that we know that you know there are different scenarios that can be met the customer also has hive um, they've always used hive so they didn't want to deter away from that and they've got that based on an app so the heating control with the thermostat set control for the property is used via hive uh, we've got our wi-fi interface here which connects the mail cloud app for the um, ecodan and just down here as you can see we've got a pv switch which is talking to the solar eye boost and that solar eye boost will then um, take control of charging hot water via the pv system if necessary this is your plate heat exchanger so essentially you've got a flow coming in goes through one side of the plates and back out to the return and the hot water will come in on the other side and as they start to mix it generates that hot water feeds back in through the cylinder this pump will start to circulate that hot water in and around this plate heat exchanger until it's satisfied and then the pump will stop and then you've got two other pumps here one's for the uh, circuit for the central heating system and that one there is a circuit feeding back to the heat pump 
Now this is your manual indicator. So if you wanted to do this without using an app, you could put this in a position somewhere that would be useful for you to use if it was in an airing cupboard or something and you can increase and decrease by 10%. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100% capacity of the hot water. The blue indicates, you know, how much, you know, to so 20% of the cylinder is of a colder water, but 80% of that cylinder is full, 210 litres, um, and that is plenty for what this customer is using at the moment. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. We've got the Eka Dam working alongside this mixture cylinder. Um, we are producing uh, 22 um, degrees for the for the house. This is what was quite important for the customer. They wanted it slightly warmer. So we've done the heat loss calcs and the radiator sizing to suit. Um, and as far as they're concerned, everything is working just as it should do. They're nice and warm. They're working very efficiently. Um, they've got a decent electrical tariff at the moment. Um, plus they've also got their solar PV, which is helping, um, you know, kind of generating their own electricity and keeping their running costs down as well. And I think solar PV is going to be working its way forward as we become sort of more and more sustainable and not having to completely rely on the grid. Please like, share and comment. Leave any comments below. Um, we hope you've enjoyed this video and um, we'll see you on the next one.